Oh, Paul. Um, I suppose it's not a new story, really. Wolves starting a season in the championship with a lot of expectation mm -hmm. on the club's shoulders. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always been the case when you're at a big club, and you know, I play for a lot of big clubs, and you know, you know, before you step into the training ground on the first day of a pre-season, that the expectation is going to be there, and it's and it, it's not going to go away. And um, you know, there's no, nothing. No, that's no different to this club. Um, we are a big club, you know. We've got a great training facility, a great fan base, uh, and, and and the fans expect to expect to be delivered, and um, you know that's that's what we try to do. Do you enjoy that pressure e even now? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've always played under pressure. You know, I, I don't know if you call it pressure. You know, I mean, pressure's probably someone who's got four kids who lives up in the, in the council flat. That's what I call pressure. Um, I call it probably enjoyment because you know. Um, to go out there in front of play in front of so many fans, you know, is, is a dream of a lifetime. So um, um, I don't really consider it as pressure, to be honest. You began the season. <coughs> it wasn't the easiest start, was it? Southampton, no. a team obviously in a similar situation, really, with a very high expectation on their shoulders. Mm. And a game you could have won. Should have won. Should have won. That goes without saying. I mean, um, uh, we had a couple of chances. Kenny Miller did a great chance. I remember rightly. I think um, I can't remember the goalkeeper's name now. Naomi made a great save, um, and we played well. We played really, really well, and uh, we were disappointed that we came away with a point. Um, but you know, the fact is, collect collectively, we thought yeah, we got a chance this year because you know everything was bonding. The teams were playing well. We played Palace on the Tuesday, um, beat them, even though we didn't play particularly well. And then we played Hull on the Saturday, and I mean the scoreline didn't really reflect, you know, the way we played because I mean we won one nil, but it could have been it could have been eight or nine to be honest. Some nervy moments against Palace, but you got a goal right at the start, right at the end. Yeah, I mean Palace, you know, I mean they're a very good side, just come down from the Premiership. You know, AJ's a quality striker, um, so you know they're they're going to have chances. And it was it was a nervy night, you know. But I mean, sometimes when you're a good side, you have to play bad and and get the points. And we did it that night. Now, obviously, after that whole game, I mean, you suffered a bit of a training ground injury, which sort of made that first half of the season quite a difficult time for you. How good a watcher are you, Paul? I'm an absolute nightmare, absolute <laughs> nightmare. The thing is, I just, I got a box in the, at the ground and all. Um, so um, I spent four months of the season sitting there, in there with my wife, Claire, and I was a pain in the butt, to be honest. Um, no, I mean, it's difficult, especially as captain, um, you know, that you can't go out there and influence the game or, you know, lend, lend your experience to the, the lads or depending what situation the team's in, you know, um, to help them out. And, you know, for the first two weeks, you know, I could deal with it. But for four months, it was it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, frustration, I suppose, was the word, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably more than frustration. You know, I mean, obviously, we weren't getting the right results, and you know, the worst thing is because you know I'm coming to the end of my career, you want to play as many games as you can. So um, to be out, you know, after playing, I mean, I I'd done all pre-season. You know, I didn't miss a day of pre-season, and I felt great. And you know, I played well against Southampton. Played well against Hull and then to miss the next four months of the season when you think, well, this could have been my last, could be my last year, was uh, was very disappointing. Yeah, do you do you fear <coughs> at that stage, this might be it? Yeah, of course you do. You know, you just think, you know, I spoke to um, Barry the physio, I spoke to the gaffer. You know, what was the best way to um, to try and sort this muscle out? And he said, well, you know, you can go over to Finland and have an operation, but you're going to be out for seven eight months, which is more or less the, the whole season. So. Um, you do start to put you know, doubts in your mind and think, maybe this is it, maybe I'm come to the end of the road. Um, but fortunately I got back into it, so I'm, you know, I'm quite pleased about that. How has your influence felt in, in the dressing room? I mean, obviously you, you can't influence things out there on the pitch, but you obviously in a role as club captain have to go in there and, and, and you know... Yeah, I mean it is difficult because you know, when you're not playing and you know, you've got 16 players, you need to go out and focus on the game. and. Um, the last thing you need is, you know, you coming in if you're not part of that, that team at the moment and, you know, saying some things because eventually I'm not going to be there. You know, in a year or two years' time, I won't be playing football. So it's down to the rest of the lads to take it upon themselves to go out there and wind each other up. But I'm mean, supposed to see certain things and, you know, I'll, I'll be watching the game. So then probably on Monday morning I'll come in and I'll, you know, pick out one or two individuals and say, well, listen, I thought you could have done this better and, you know, what, what do you think about this and maybe this and and have a discussion that way and try and use my influence maybe two days after when, it, when it's all calmed down. 
in that time watching, did, did you, I suppose, learn things about the team that you might otherwise not have done? No, I think, I mean, I think you learn, you learn things about individual players. You know, as a, as a team, I've been here four years, so I know, you know, what the team is capable of. Um, but uh, it's just basically the individual players who've just come to the club. You know, how, how can you help them? Most of the players have been, have been here for quite a while. But the likes of Ricketts and Gabor and Dennis Rosa and sh not so much Shaggy because he's an experienced player, but people like that, you know, if, if you can help them out in any way by seeing what they do on the pitch, you know, and you can, you know, pull them aside and give your point of view as well as theirs, then, then you've got something going. From a personal point of view, I mean, th does that help your development for life after playing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I like to think so. I mean, um, it's normally the natural process in life, you know, I have to be a footballer to try, to try coaching or management. Um, at the moment, I'm not really thinking that way because I still believe I can play another year. Um, but it's something that's at the back of my mind and it's something that I'm, you know, I'm seriously interested in, in, in doing. And I suppose Glenn, in terms of, of an influence, I mean, you've worked with him at an England level. He's a coach who, who's got a lot of experience at the very top and, and you can't fail to learn <coughs> from him, I suppose. No, he's one of the best as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean, I've worked with Alex Ferguson, he was fantastic. Even going back to John Lowe at West Ham, when I, I mean, he was, he was brilliant. Um, so I worked with some top, top class managers and, um, you know, you learn a lot from them in different ways, you know, in different ways and um, our gaff is very meticulous, he's very detailed, he likes to know everything about the opposition and, and what we have to do and, you know, it, you know, I, I will take a lot from Glenn because I think he's an um, outstanding manager. Seems like he's the sort of guy, when there is criticism from the terraces, say, it's, it doesn't appear to weigh that heavily, at least publicly. Listen, our gaff has been manager of bloody England. You know, hmm. that's that's pressure. I mean, I'm sure, you know, 20,000 fans shouting at the gaffer, you know, is Waterford Ducks back to, to, to our boss. You know, he's, he's had um, lots of pressures, higher pressures than that. So um, it doesn't affect him, and you know, he he doesn't show that it affects him. And as he says, he'd rather the fans be shouting at him than shouting at us. And he takes the pressure off us, which is what a, what a good manager does. Is it fair to say his strengths are out there on that, that training pitch? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he, and he's still he's still a player. I, I, I hate to say, I <laughs> is hate he still the best in five aside? Yeah, uh, he's he just goings nowadays. But um, <laughs> you can now you can see, and I I don't like saying this, but he's he's he's, he's a, even now, you know, the quality that he's got and left footed, right footed, he, he's a still a top 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 player. Um, but yeah, in, in what he does, he sets pieces, his team play, his pattern play. It's all basically simple, and he simplifies it so you know where you are. No, it's not too confusing, you're not trying to take in 20 things at a time, you know, and uh, as I say, that's the ingredient you need to be if you're going to be a, a top, top class manager, and Glenn certainly that. I suppose it's, it's difficult at championship level, isn't it, because the, the finances, mm -hmm. when you're not in a premiership, even for a club of Wolves size, it's still very difficult. Of course it's difficult, but it's difficult for, you know, people, you know, in South End or Hartley, who have got no dough, and Mike New at Luton, I mean, we're fortunate because we're one of the big clubs and we can spend money. You know, obviously the economics of football nowadays, you ain't going to go out and spend a lot, a lot of money to get a decent player here. You can buy a decent player for a million pounds or 750 grand in this league. So, um, no, I mean, well, that's no excuse for us. You know, we've got no excuses. As far as I'm concerned, we've, we've got the best bunch of players here and um, we haven't performed as we'd like to done this season. In terms of the fervour around, in terms of the passion around Wolves, I mean, I, I imagine it, it's comparable to other clubs you've played for, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, all fans are passionate in their own different way. I mean, for me, the most passionate was when I was at Inter Milan, they were just, you know, they're mad. You know, fireworks and all that. Lots. But it was a different kind of passion because of the cultures of the, of, the, of, the, of the two different countries. But no, I mean, the Wolves fans are probably but they're very passionate. They want success. You know, they want to win every game. They want to see this club in, in the Premiership. You know, uh, we had a taste of it two years ago. You know, being the mate in the Ads and the Arsenal's and the Chelsea's here. You know, that's what they want. and. Um, that's what I, I strive to give them, and I'm sure that's what the Gaffer strives to give them. Yeah, getting a taste of that must have made you a lot more hungry for it. Um, in fact, it probably benefits me more than anything because, I mean, in the Premiership, they probably didn't, they play Saturday to Saturday. Well, as in the Championship, you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, you're playing three games a week in the Championship. Um, but in the Premiership, it probably benefited me more. Um, but, you know, whether we get there, I mean, I'll be too old, I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be next season. But, you know, um, we're striving for that. What do you feel you can do to kind of cure the inconsistency that, that, that's kind of really rocked this playoff bid, really? I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's an album because 
we play, the boys have played so well in, in, in patches this season. We, I mean, we've picked teams apart football-wise. You know, the way the gaffer wants to play. He doesn't want to, I mean, launch it long, launch it long, like some teams do. That's not the way the gaffer wants to play. He wants to get the ball down and play football, and that's what we try to do. Um, and basically, we've just got to be more ruthless. I mean, I think um, we've got to be probably mentally more strong as a team, collectively. You know, we've got to put the games to bed, you know, and because um, football-wise, I think we're the best team in this league. Uh, that includes winning and any other team, but you know we haven't, been, you know we haven't given ourselves probably a chance, you know, and um, that's a disappointing thing about it. I suppose finding that killer goal does always make a difference, doesn't get it? Get me up there, get me up front. I, I, I'm scoring, <laughs> I'm scoring at the moment, so I can go up front and score some goals. Yeah, it is, and obviously we're, we're, we're losing Kenny Miller in, uh, this season, you know, and, he, and he's a goal scorer. You know, he's, I mean, it'd be sad to see him go because he is a goal scorer, um, but. You know, the football's there, that, you know, we're nearly there, but we're not quite not there. And we have to get over this mental block of, you know, lesser teams coming to Molyneux and, you know, struggling to break them down. And, you know, if we get a chance, we need to take that chance. Because if we take that chance, then they have to open up. And once they open up, you can start exploiting their gaps. Um, but we need to get that first goal. Um, uh, so it can be mentally um, it, you know, and, and football-wise and all. How much is it all in the mind, then, in terms of... Getting over that. It's a lot to the mind. And so if you're not mentally strong, then you're always going to struggle and you're always going to worry about it. You know, if the fans get on your back, you know, and it, and it affects you, then it stops you performing. If you've got seven or eight players who can deal with that, then, you know, you've got a chance of being successful. You know, and then I think mental, mental toughness and desire uh, are two ingredients that make you a successful side. But they can't be just one or two players. That's why Chelsea and Mate United are great sides because eight or nine of players, probably all of their players are mentally tough when things ain't going well and they come through it together. How much does it hurt you now? You so know, what? when, when, you know, th th there is a lot, obviously a lot of, lot of promise here. Mm. How much does it hurt you when that promise isn't delivered? Yeah, it does because as I say there's a lot of promise, there's a lot of talent here and when it's not being, when it's not getting f uh, fulfilled then it does because, as you said before, Sheffield Wednesday, you know, they've struggled with the season, they were once a big club, big club, sorry. Which have FA Cup semi-finals at their grounds, you know, and um, so I don't think it can't happen to us. Uh, and it does know when you've got the talent and you see the talent out on the training ground, week in and week out, and yet sometimes we don't reproduce that on the pitch, and it, it, it hurts me. I'm sure it hurts the rest of the lads. I'm sure it hurts the gaffer even more than anyone and the fans. But um, we need to find a solution, you know, for next season. That's going to make sure that when, when the season starts, we're up there winning games, not not one or two and drawing two and losing one. But winning five and six, seven, eight in a bounce. You know, I think we won three, three in a bounce this season for the first time you know, in, in, in a long time. You know, that ain't good enough for Wolverhampton Football Club. I wish we'd win six or seven with the players that we've got here.